When, when I came to Purdue, I didn't have enough money to make it through sophomore year. So I came as a freshman and my dad was gonna give me some cash. I had made money flipping pizzas and I had enough money to get through freshman year. But I didn't have any money after that. So I came to Purdue literally thinking I might have to find another university to go to for, for my sophomore year. And so the first thing I did was I signed up to work in the residence hall kitchens, which was the dining halls, which was great. Uh, sure, that's like cleaning plates with the thing, we called it the pig, and you had to like put food down in the, the, the pig and all that kind of stuff, which was you know, dirty and, and all that kind of stuff. I loved it. I loved working in, in, in the dining halls. It's a service-oriented thing. I earned the money from it. But more than that, it was the camaraderie of the other people that I was working with that was just so awesome. And, and uh, I then became a dining captain, I think we called it back then. And so then you had a staff of people working for you. And so uh, that was a chance to do scheduling and a chance to have people go like, oh, I have an exam, I can't show up. It's like, or they tell you after the fact, I had an exam, I didn't show up. It's like, you should have told me ahead of time. You know, but you get to manage those people issues. That's management. I can tell you 20 years later, I couldn't do this for the client because I had this thing. It's like, I, I dealt with this 20 years ago, you know, when I was in the residence hall of dining room, you know, so you learn so many good leadership skills uh, as you go through this. So, uh, and then I worked as a staff resident whew, and a counselor in the dorms in the, in the residence halls. And, you know, doing that, I tell people, I still tell RAs today, I get what you do, because I used to do that 40 years ago. But the way I look at it is that you get paid for one night a semester. I'm like, what do you mean you get paid for one night a semester? There's that one night that you didn't study for this exam, that's 7.30 in the morning. It's eight o'clock, get your books all settled, and you're ready to go, you're off duty. There's a knock on your door and somebody says, the toilets on the second floor are blown up. Well, where's Bob? Can't find Bob anywhere. He's on duty, he's the guy on duty. It's like, I hear you, but water's flowing all over the floor. We need this fixed. Then you go up there and, and then everybody's worried and there's this thing and there's a couple of parents that had come over and they're all worried about how their kids are like living in the residence halls and it's this big thing. You have to call the parents down. You have to call you, you know, um, uh, facilities to get the thing fixed and you know, the, everybody's going like, I can't, you know, all this stuff. It ends up being 3.30 in the morning. Your, your test is at 7.30 in the morning. That's the night you get paid because you didn't look ahead for that time and it just, in every semester, there's always something like that. Again, sounds terrible. I know that wasn't a, a ringing endorsement to be a staff resident in the residence halls, but what a great way to learn how to manage people, manage parents, and then how to deal with, I gotta navigate this stuff, how to be prepared for things that, like that to happen. And in those days, uh, we, were, we were the buck stops here. If, if something happens on a weekend, you were the guy, you were the only person. Tremendous leadership, tremendous responsibility um, to look at that. You know, I really felt like when I was a staff resident, you know, I was, I, I held these guys' lives in my hands to give them an opportunity to experience things differently. All of those experiences of working here while I was on campus were directly relatable skills to exactly what I was doing in my, in my consulting life, in my career. Managing people, managing schedules, managing conflicting priorities. The flip side of that, um, I worked in a consulting firm and I've seen, if not thousands, tens of thousands of resumes. And we hired good people from great schools. So I can tell you the uh, 3.9s, we're on a four point scale, 3.9s, you know, 4.0s, good. President of the accounting club, good. You know, all those things, but those are just like, okay, great. But what's the story you have to tell? And if I tell a story of being a staff resident, how I didn't study for a test, I didn't, wasn't prepared, but then this thing happened and I took care of it, I'm, show, I'm telling a story of leadership, which is what they're looking for, what I was looking for. I'm looking for those stories, those colorful stories of, of a thousand resumes. You're the 17th person I've talked to over the last two days, give me something. Give me something colorful. Give me something, a story that, you, that, is, that makes me go like, lean in and go like, oh, who are you? 
What are you about? I'm curious now about you. And I can, I can say this with confidence. Every student at Purdue, where, freshman, your story of getting here is unique. Everybody's got a unique story. So tell the story, craft the story. And so when you do the interviewing, go do things. Don't, don't do resume filler stuff. Don't waste your time with that. Fill your resume with things that gave you passion, things that made you go like, I learned a ton, things that challenge you, things that you fail at. And as a recruiter, you know, when I was recruiting people and I was a partner, so I was the closer, I was the one that ultimately made the decision. Man, after 17 of these, give me something. Just give me, some, great, give me a great story to tell. And that can be how you had to juggle priorities, which is what I'm gonna ask you to do, how you led people, which is what I'm gonna ask you to do, and how you were fun to work with, what I want you to do with my teams. Those are the things, I, the stories I wanna hear from you, because I know you're gonna fill those roles that I've got for you over here, because you've had the experience of working and extracurriculars and excelling in school. Oh, you got those things? Man, that's, that's, that, those are the candidates I want. Those are the coachable people that I want, and I know they'll succeed in, in a grueling, difficult consulting career. Being in front of clients, man, I want, I want that confidence in those, those, those new analysts coming in. Uh, create your story.